holds something to it. Holds you to something. So often we use those words pretty lightly. Well, God bless you. You know, we'll, we'll say that to somebody, but do we really stop? And think about what we're saying, who we're talking about. Why we're asking for that blessing. It's kind of interesting. I, I was reading these words. Oh, thus be it ever, when free men shall stand between their loved homes and the war's desolation, blessed with victory and peace, we made a heaven rescued land, praise the power that has made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must when our cause it is just. And this be our motto. In God is our trust. Anybody know what that is? What that comes out of? Nobody? It's our national anthem. It's the last verse of our national anthem. I cut out the last two lines because I would have given it away. And the Star Spangled Banner in triumph shall wave <laughs> over the land of the free and the home of the brave. There's actually four verses to our national anthem. We sing the first one. But there's four verses. Our money says, in God we trust. We get a lot of people will trust in that money more than they'll trust in the God who blesses us with it. We as Christians have a responsibility. As I was trying to figure out where God wanted me to go this morning. What He wanted me to talk on. There was, there was literally nothing coming. And Micah came in a couple times. She said, Dad, you got a scripture verse yet so I can get it loaded on the computer. And I said, no. Then about five minutes before the service, I handed her a scripture verse. And she said, go give it to Corey. It's a little late now. But uh, Corey got loaded up. But I was, I was trying to think, you know, there's so many things we've got in this country. So many blessings God has given us. But so much we take for granted. There's so many things that we really don't stop to realize we have. that we wouldn't have if we lived other places. But we are slowly seeing the trust in God slipping away. We are slowly seeing God's blessing being thrown back in His face. Not just because people are turning their backs on God, but because Christians aren't standing up for God. I mean, nothing raises your hackles more than somebody steps on something you love. You know, uh, I've been a father a few times. Somebody steps on one of my kids. Man, that really gets me going. So, you know, I'll, I'll stand up for my children. Somebody says something about my wife. That, that stirs me up real quick. You know, somebody says something about our, our flag. Our national anthem, boy, that just, that riles us. That gets us going. Somebody says something about our God, and we really don't pay a lot of attention because we've heard it before, and we, we just look the other way, and you know they step on our faith a little, and stuff and that's we've just gotten kind of apathetic about 
taking that stand. And I looked all through the scriptures trying to find God, where do you want me to go? And there was talks about freedom. There was talks in there about our, our country and how you should respect the government like I read earlier because God put it there. And I looked over in Luke. It was chapter 12. Corey doesn't even have this one. I looked over in Luke chapter 12. Even as I was sitting up here, I, I was thinking, oh, is that what God wanted me? Because it was in one of the songs there. It was amazing in, in that second song. You know, it's talking about Luke chapter 12, where it talks about, do not be afraid of those who kill a body, and after that, have no more than they can do. But I warn you, whom to fear? Fear the one who after he is killed has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. But you know the verse that comes right after that? And that's a powerful verse. That's a scary verse. When you stop to think about it, fear God. He can kill you. And he can cast you into hell. Don't be worried about the virus. Don't be worried about these other things. Don't be worried about protests. Don't be worried about anybody doing anything. Be worried about God. But the very next thing it talks about is how much God loves us. Those very next words say, Are not five sparrows sold for two cents? Yet not one of them is forgotten before God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are numbered. Do not fear, you are more valuable than many sparrows. God loves you so much. God has blessed you with so much. But what do we do with it? What do we do with this blessing from God? In Romans 12, is where God led me to. And I was like, wow, what's that got to do with Independence Day? What's that got to do with freedom? But as you read this, I want you to listen to it in a different aspect this morning. Because this is a freedom God gives you. And this is what you're to do with that freedom He gives you. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. We are free to worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the proportions of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. I want to think what's been going on these last few days these last few weeks. 
Somebody mentioned Minnesota earlier. I think it was Ann. Missy and Andrew live in Minnesota. Minnesota's been on the news a lot. You can't turn on the TV without hearing about it. Can't forget what's happening in the U.S. But now, listen to verse 9. And on down, I think. Where are you at in this? What are you doing about all this? Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, clinging to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted in prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heat burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. We as a body of Christ are watching our freedom in this country change. We're watching a lot of things change. I'll, I'll use Glenn since he's not here. And that way nobody can say anything. Glenn could tell you in the last 90 some years he's seen a lot of changes in this country. A lot of freedoms change. And a lot of different things going on in 90 plus years. But the scariest thing is to see how the church of God has changed in the last 10 years, in the last 30 years, in the last 90 years. The church of God in America has been changing. But our God doesn't change. Our God is the same He was at the time of the creation as He is now. And we as Christians, we need to take this chapter 12 of Romans
And no matter what happens in your life, see if you're handling it the way God tells you to. You know, we have a responsibility that God bless the USA with the soldiers that serve. Soldiers have a responsibility when they sign up. They know what they face. Some of them might not have gone overseas. I've had people who tell me, Ron Johnson used to say, I have a hard time raising my hand when you ask for anybody that's a, you know, ex-military, because he says, I never went overseas. And my answer was always, you didn't make that choice. Somebody above you made that choice. But you were there ready to go if they chose to send you. And you had a responsibility. And a lot of us can understand that because they signed up for it. They enlisted. You know, back when, when I was growing up, they had something called a draft. The younger kids probably just think that applies to sports terms, but that used to apply to the military. And they didn't give you a choice. They'd say, hey, you, you're signing up, you go. But they still learn to do that responsibility. Might have taken a little breaking down in boot camp, but they learn the responsibility. And unfortunately, as Christians, we don't take that responsibility that we have in Christ to do things Christ's way. To live for Christ. We all fail at times. Every one of us fail. We will fail. <clears throat> but you know, no matter what, you've got to get back up. This wouldn't be the United States of America.